Hi, and welcome to Read It Between the Lines. I am your host, The Water Dog, and today I'm going to start a two-part series on my version of Tiny Dominate. That's right, we're building a Tiny Dominate deck. That's right, Weenie Bleeding Hate, <laughs> the type of deck that everybody hates to see at a table. And I built one, and I played it at the Aggressive Tactics Tournament Inviter, and I'm going to tell you how the deck did it, everything else. But in today's video, we're going to break down Tiny Dominate. We're going to talk about it for a little bit and uh, give you some ideas on how to build a deck like this and see if it can work for you. So here we go, Tiny Dominate. Get some tiny action. The first thing we're going to look at is the crypt. Uh, and so when I was looking for the crypt, you know, I want all of my, you know, all of my vampires need to have dominate. So the best grouping for that is really group two, three, because you get the most vampires uh, with, uh, you know, uh, inferior dominate um, in those groupings. And so I went with group two and three. And so uh, when you look at that uh, fact that you're going to be using uh, those vampires, we're going to have one one cap with good old Royce. He's my only one cap in the entire deck. And there's a lot of times when I see people do weenie bleed, uh, they, they use like as many one caps and two caps as they can, and they do computer hacking and everything else. And we're not doing that. We, we want the most efficient that we can get, uh, and, and that is because we're going to be doing a lot of governed bleeding and stuff like that. So I've got one one cap, and then when we go to the two caps, there are four, Okay. There are four of them, uh, you know, so some of the classics there, okay? Uh, so we have four two-caps, and then we've got nine three-caps, nine three-caps. So it's a total crypt of 14 vampires. And like I said, the only thing they have in common is inferior dominate, okay? So that's the crypt right there, okay? Now, there's other reasons why I, uh, I like the three cap and why there's so many three caps as compared to some of the other weenie decks that you'll see that's basically one and two caps and stuff like that. And that is because this protects you from things like Scourge. So it does protect you from things like Scourge, and it does allow you to bleed multiple times with Govern. Uh, and so you have that ability to bleed on, on several occasions with, uh, with that, with, with the three cap. Okay, because let's say if you, if you Govern bleed with a one cap, well, then you got to hunt the next turn, right? Well, uh, there's going to be some my tricks of the trade, so to speak, that we're going to get into that and this, that, and the other for that. But that's the crypt. That's it. That's what I'm playing with. 14 vampires. And like I said, the majority of them are going to be three-cap dominate, and that's what we're looking at. Okay? So that's the first step. And the second step, of course, then now, of course, is the library and what you're wanting to do with the library. Well, let's bring up the old water dog deck building tactics because this is the type of deck where I really kind of throw <laughs> these tactics out the window. And the reason for that is, is because I want to streamline the deck to make it as fast and efficient as possible. I want to be able to take somebody out by turn four. That's it. I want to be able to take, I want to be able to take out my prey by turn four, if at all possible. That's the goal. By turn four, I want them gone and off the table. I want to get a VP point, and I want to have, you know, you know, my next opponent, my newest prey coming up. I want, I want them to be scared because uh, by that time, I should really have. Uh, hopefully, uh, if I'm if I'm in a good position, six to seven minions on the table, and then you know trying to oust my next prey uh, with uh, you know uh, with those vampires being able to bleed a couple of turns and do that. So we want to streamline this thing as fast as possible, and so that means we're not going to play with the usual deck building tactics. Now, if you want to understand how I use my deck building tactics, you can always go back to my ministry video. Episode 13, which was my Ministry Barons video, and I really kind of break down the deck building tactics and stuff like that. Now, I pretty much hold fast to all of that except for a deck like this because, like I said, with a deck like this, I'm trying to streamline. So when we look at this, what am I not going to include in this deck? Uh, well, we're going to get rid of political cards. I'm not going to have any vote cards in this deck. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just getting rid of political cards. We will talk about that a little bit later because that will come back to maybe bite me here when I get into the tournament. Uh, unlock cards. I don't care about unlocking. I'm just I'm I'm going straight forward. Uh, once again, uh, I'm taking cards out of the deck to streamline what I want to do as efficiently as possible. Okay. Alternative win condition. No, we are bleeding to win. There's no alternative win condition cards in this deck. We are bleeding to win. And pool game cards. We're going to gain pool when we oust our prey. That's it. So, uh, so I'm streamlining the deck 
uh, really down to try to be as fast and as efficient as possible to do the same thing over and over and over again. So let's start with my core cards. There are three cards I'm going to be you know, really centering around. That's Govern the, uh, the Unlined, uh, Scouting Mission, and Foreshadowing Destruction. Uh, you know, and in this deck, we're going to run 14 Governs, we're going to run 10 Scouting Missions, and then we're going to run 10 Foreshadowing Destructions. Now, the reason for running a lot of Scouting Missions as well is because I want to still be able to bleed every turn. I don't want to have to hunt every turn. So if I've, got a, if I've got a vampire that has one blood on it, then I'm going to use scouting mission. If it has two blood on it, I'm going to use govern. It's, it's that simple. Okay, That's exactly my philosophy on that. So, for example, if I get Royce out, then he, you know, he's using scouting mission. He's using scouting mission, and then we're going to back that up with a foreshadowing destruction. So just even with Royce bleeding with scouting mission, that's still a three bleed. Okay, and so if you get somebody like Samson, which is a two cap coming out, well, then if you're governing uh, and then foreshadowing, well, then now all of a sudden you've got a four bleed, right? Uh, and then, of course, then we build upon all of that, all right? So that's the core cards. Those are the three main cards. That's what we're using to really kind of go out and, and bleed up our prey, all right? Now, the next thing on the list is modifying cards. And, of course, we're going to use Foreshadowing Destruction as part of our core cards, but we're going to also modify using two other cards. One of them is going to be Seduction. Now, you might be thinking, well, Seduction, how is that going to work? Well, that's the reason why we're going to play with, as we get to the Master cards, we're going to play uh, with a Dominate uh, Skill card as well. And so with a Dominate Skill card, uh, you know, we can basically then seduce any vampire we want. And once once again, you know, that helps us be able to try to get the action through where they can't block the action. Now, they can still bounce the action. That becomes a problem uh, with, with the deck is the ability for them to bounce the action. But by the same token, they still can't block the action, and your vampire stays on the table. Another great card uh, for this uh, idea of trying not to take any damage while you're going, you know, while you're going after your prey is the sleeping mind. Uh, and, I, and I should iterate, you know, we're trying not to take damage. That's one of the big things is you want to keep your vampires on the table and you don't want to take damage, okay? And so you're trying to stay out of combat. You're trying to avoid combat. You're trying to not get hit. You want to be able to just bleed every turn with your guys and keep them on the table. Well, seduction, you know, once again keeps you out of the combat, but so does the sleeping mind. Uh, only usable when the action is announced. Choose a locked vampire. Uh, he or she cannot attempt to block this action. Okay? And that's, that's really good stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's really, really good stuff. And what's even better is that the superior minions cannot unlock during this action. So, if you've got it at superior, if their minions are tapped down, none of them, and that includes... Allies, this is minions cannot unlock during this action, and it's going to cost you one, you know, one blood. This is a really, really, really good card. I really like Sleep in Mind. Uh, we're going to play with three seductions, and we're going to play with four Sleeping Minds. That's how many we're sticking in this deck. Three seductions, four Sleeping Minds. Now, the next thing is defense cards. And, of course, the best defense card uh, for Tiny Dominate is going to be Deflection. You know, you're going to transfer a new vampire out there on the table. You're trying to get one transferred at the end of every turn that you do. So you've got yourself, your vampire set up. You keep a deflection in hand, and it did work. I mean, I got, got some deflections off. Uh, and then you simply deflect. The other thing is, is now they're scared to bleed you because they know you're playing Tiny Dominate, and they know that you're going to be deflecting. So the likelihood of them wanting to bleed you is because they know then that that damage is going to be going uh, you know, towards their ally, and uh, so they they don't like that either. So it does hold back the the bleeding a little bit, but that's the, you know that's just one of the best ways to basically defend yourself. You know, um, is to use deflection. Deflection, of course, one of the best cards in the game uh, that there is, and so that's that's your defense card. Okay, with deflection, we are going to play with six cards. We're going to have six deflections. That's our defense. Now, I'm doing combat a lot different uh, than what I've seen weenie decks do for combat. 
and that is I'm going to try to avoid the combat. Typically speaking, if you're playing weenie combat, uh, the thing that you usually are going to see are going to be, you're going to see a few things. Uh, but the things that you're typically going to see are something like maybe a, a concealed weapon flash grenade, or you're going to see a, uh, uh, a target vitals, weighted walking stick type of combo uh, where they'll play that. Even the old classic uh, dodge, okay? That's Riling. I'm going to lean on dodge, but I'm not going to play the card dodge because the card dodge says do not replace until after combat, and I want to be able to cycle cards because there, you know, there's no telling I might need a second dodge during that combat at some point. So I prefer Absorb the Mind. So Absorb the Mind is the card I like because at the Inferior Dominate, you could strike dodge. You can replace the card, and once again, the whole idea is to not take damage. Now, some people will say, well... You should use a weighted walking stick, and you should use target vitals because then you're damaging your opponent's vampires. That's all fine, well, and good. But a lot of times, uh, if you're playing against a combat deck, they're already set up to defend themselves against that stuff anyway. So they're usually going to have like a strike dodge additional strike. Uh, and so all of a sudden, you've now got two cards in your hand uh, that slows down what you're really trying to do, which is to bleed. So I'd rather just have one you know, combat card and that's going to be absorbed the mind. We're going to dodge, and we're going to rock and roll. We're going to go there. It actually worked really, really well for me. It worked really, really well. I had no problem. In fact, the only time I ever got uh, in trouble with this deck will be in round three, and we'll talk about that uh, uh, that when we get to it. But the, the, the big thing is, is this card works. It keeps you out of combat. It keeps blood on your vampires. You can then go to the next turn, and then you can still govern and do all that type of stuff. So it streamlines what you want to do. It makes it faster, makes it more efficient, and that's why I like it, okay? So that's my combat card right there. And we're going to play with eight of those boys. Eight, Absorb the Mines. Our last section is utility cards, and um, I, I kind of struggled a little bit with the utility cards because I kept trying to figure out which way I'm going to do with this type of stuff and so forth and so on. But really what it boils down to is just it's my master cards that I'm going to be using in this utility uh, setup. Uh, so I used the master cards uh, for my utility purposes, uh, and, I, and I leaned on them heavily. And I kind of fluctuated which way I was going to go and which direction I was going to go. But by the time I got it all set up and streamlined, it worked really, really, really good. So I was very happy with uh, the way my utility cards worked for me uh, using this set of master cards. So here we go. We got the British Museum. And, and some people say, well, why are you playing with the British Museum? The reason for playing with the British Museum is to put one into play to contest more than anything else. That's all it is. It's to contest and to slow down uh, those decks that rely on it for equipment. Uh, right now, the British Museum is probably one of the most widely used cards. It's one of the it's one of the cards that is is you know basically allows you to play all this extra equipment, gives you a lot of unlocks, uh, gives you an extra hand size. It is a great great card. So what you want to do is you want to slow down your opponents by sticking one in. If you're not going to utilize the card, I would suggest at this point, if you're building a tournament deck, to stick one in your deck just to contest. Stick a British Museum in your deck just to contest to keep your opponents from using it. That's really the reason why you stick it in there. You stick it in there to keep your opponents from using it, and that's where you go. Okay. Uh, of course, Dominate, we want three because we want to have the Superior Dominate. And that's to help us with the foreshadowing destruction so that now when our opponents get down below that nine pool uh, range, uh, we're now hitting them for an additional three. So with a govern uh, and with foreshadowing destruction, you're now looking at a six bleed, a six bleed. And so there you go. There, that's weenie, weenie six bleed, pretty good. Effective management, of course, that, of course, is to go ahead and move a vampire uh, from your uh, you know, crypt to your uncontrolled region. Once again, you want to be able to get as many vampires out, and really your goal should be to try to at least get one out at the end of every turn. And so we have four effective managements. Uh, we then go to the uh, information highway, which gives you more transfers. We're going to play with three of them. Once again, that helps you with the, your crypt because you can always pay a pool, move a vampire over into your uncontrolled region from your crypt with that, and because uh, you've got the two extra transfers coming from the information highway. So there you go. Love life in the city. Life in the city is a great trifle, and it's really good with the weenie deck because now when I 
govern with Royce. If I have a life in the city in my hand, turn one with a govern. I have no problem governing with Royce at this particular point. So now I can govern with Royce, and I can then bleed for up to four. And then, you know, the next turn, have a life in the city and have Royce, you know, then go right back and do a scouting mission. So it's really, really great card. It's a trifle. You can play two a turn. And so what it does is it just helps you just, you know, with, it, it keeps you from hunting is really what it does. It just keeps you from hunting. You rock and roll. Uh, then, of course, sudden reversals. You want to pe prevent people from veiling. That's it. You just want to uh, prevent people from gaining pull or from gaining card hand advantage. So my targets for this is always going to be things like Valen, Dreams of the Sphinx, Giant's Blood. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm mainly looking at that at my prey and uh, my first uh, loose ally. I'm always looking at those guys more than anything else. I'm not too concerned about what my predator's doing. I pretty much will let the predator have free range to do whatever they want to. Uh, but uh, there you go. That's the deck. That's the buildup. That's what it's going to look like. And uh, like I said, it, uh, it is designed to go fast, quick, and in a hurry more than anything else. And so I really like the deck. I mean, I'm not really much, if, if anybody ever knows me, because when I was playing the tournament, and Norm goes, I can't believe you are playing Weenie Bleed. I go, Norm, have you ever seen me play Weenie Bleed? He goes, no. I go, that's why I played it. <laughs> As I never played this style of deck. But if I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it my way. And so, like I said, I've got it streamlined. And like I said, when we get into the tournament, I'll talk about a couple of changes that we'll make. But that's all I got, man. Thanks for your time, man, and I appreciate you watching. And if you like what you're watching, man, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Y'all take care. You watched the whole video? <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Reading Between the Lines. I'm your host, The Water Dog. And if you like what you've been watching, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Y'all take care.